Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at not one, but two different products that kind of complement one another. They go together well, I'll say. The first is a mechanical keyboard, the Magic Force Smart 2, also sometimes goes by the name of the Magic Force Smart 68. This is a compact keyboard with a 60%-ish kind of layout. It's not exactly a 60% board, it's a little bit bigger, and it includes dedicated arrow keys and a handful of nav cluster keys. It's actually quite a unique layout that I've only seen on Magic Force boards before. It also sports die sub PBT keycaps, Bluetooth connectivity, uh, and Gatoron switches, mechanical switches. And the original Magic Force board was kind of an, an early front runner uh, for um, people's favorite cheap or budget mechanical keyboard uh, back in the day when the idea of compact mechanical keyboards was kind of new to many folks and there were very few 60% boards on the market. I remember the original Magic Force being quite popular uh, among budget keyboard enthusiasts and so I'm very keen to check out this successor of sorts that packs in some of these additional features. Alongside the Magic Force Smart 2, I'm also going to be checking out a numeric keypad, a standalone numeric keypad called the Magic Force Crystal. This is a 21 key numeric keypad, and the idea is that you can use it if you, for example, have a laptop that lacks a keypad, but you would like one for data entry or what have you or alongside a compact mechanical keyboard that lacks a keypad, uh, such as the Magic Force Smart 2. So it essentially replaces the numpad on a full-size keyboard with a standalone unit. And the benefit of this is that you can choose to use it or not. So you can bring it out when you have data entry or number work to do, and then you can put it away when you don't, and you get to reclaim that space on your desktop and have the more ergonomic uh, compact form factor of say a 60% board. That's the idea anyway. So uh, banggood.com was of course kind enough to send over product samples for each of these for us to take a look at here today. The Magic Force Smart 2 retails for a regular price of $100, although I've frequently seen it on sale for less than that. The Magic Force Crystal uh, retails for $35, although, again, I've frequently seen it on sale for a bit less than that. Also, both of them sport a fixed white backlight, uh, so no RGB on these guys, but there are a few different effects and things like that. So. I'm keen to check them out, see what they're all about. I hope you are too. So without further ado, let's take a look at the Magic Force Smart 2 and the Magic Force Crystal. All right, so here we have both the Magic Force Smart 2 and the Crystal in box. Let's start with well, we'll start with the crystal. It's the smaller of the two. Probably will be a little quicker to unbox. We'll put the Smart 2 aside for the moment. And we'll look at the crystal. So the box is uh, white with a picture of the product. On the front, we've got a bang good sticker here, but it reads underneath that crystal 21 key mechanical numeric keypad. Uh, it's got some Magic Force branding up here and then some strange, I don't know, 
marking some dirt on here or something, which uh, is not part of the aesthetic. It's just how the package showed up. Um, let's look over here. This is telling us what configuration this particular magic force crystal is found in. So, I'll turn this around so I can see what I'm looking at. This particular product has Gatoron switches as opposed to Cherry. Available with either, though. Gatoron Browns uh, with a white backlight and PBT die sub keycaps. Also available with ABS double shot if you want the shine through like it shows on the front here. However, the PBT die sub caps will match the caps on the Smart 2 better, which is why I went for those ones. Uh, and this is Gatoron Brown as well as the Smart 2, so they should pair nicely. Uh, some other just basic info here about compatibility. Works with... Oh, it's just uh, trademark stuff, actually. Not even compatibility. Here we go. Product specifications around this side. In both English and Chinese. And it reads... Layout, 21 keys, switch life. Well, let's see, that's five followed by a lot of zeros. That is 50 million cycles, uh, which is par for the course for mechanical switches. I believe that's what Cherry claims Gator on as well, although some mechanical switches these days, including the opto uh, mechanical, like the uh, optical ones, claim even more uh, keystrokes because their mechanism is actually somewhat simpler. Uh, dimensions, so system requirements, it specifies Windows. Doesn't say anything about Mac OS, although I believe down here, yes, it talks about Apple and Mac, so I don't know. Funny. And of course, a USB port. Package contains numeric keypad, USB cable, and a quick start guide. Nice and simple. Then on the back, we have a sort of schematic image of the keypad. And then some features down here. Let's read through those quick. Asynchronous number lock function that is independent of the computer's keyboard. So if you have a full-size keyboard, presumably, but you want another keypad as well, which you could use as a macro pad, for instance, uh, then you can enable or disable them separately. Clear bottom case, clean, elegant design, mechanical switch to ensure a quick response, LED backlight, 21 key extended layout, function key combinations, Standard size zero and plus keys for a keypad. Three lighting modes, six lighting strength levels, ergonomic key profile, which will just be a standard OEM profile, I suspect, and cherry type stabilizers for the large keys. Oh, and actually, it does still have the Kisan branding here. I had noticed they rebranded all their Magic Force boards to just Magic Force, but they used to be known as the key sound magic force. So it is still part of the same company. All right, let's open this up. Box is a little dog-eared. Looks like it's seen better days, honestly. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the aesthetics and the information presented, it seems sufficient, if not particularly impressive. is weirdly dusty. This uh, plastic 
uh, molding, I mean. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, please let go. There we go. We'll look at the keyboard itself in a second, or the keypad, but quickly. Not much else in the package here, just a piece of cardboard which contained uh, a white USB cable, USB uh, A on this end to micro USB on this end, which is a pretty old fashioned standard these days, and USB C would be preferable. But, uh, and interestingly, I think the Magic Force 2 actually comes USB-C, so this must be an older product or something. Um, but it's got a nice Velcro cable wrap there. It's PVC um, sheathed. Looks to be of decent length. We've got just an unbranded housing on this end the same on this end. Nothing especially fancy. But yeah, it looks like it's probably long enough. I expect it's about three feet. And I do appreciate that it's in white because that'll match better with the keypad. However, still a shame that it's micro USB and not C. Uh, and then we've got a quick start guide here, which appears to be pretty minimal. Uh, also very Chinese. Oh, there we go. Got English on this side. Product features. What is this? The 21 key extended layout at the top contains escape, tab, backspace, and function keys, which is kind of neat. Uh, by simultaneously pressing a combination of keys with a function key, I see, you can get secondary functions on a variety of these keys, uh, such as currency symbols of various kinds. Suitable for users of laptops and or mini keyboards with no number pads, indeed. Okay, so here's a little read out with the secondary function layer and the different lighting modes. We'll check that functionality out when we actually plug the thing in, but for now I think we've got the idea. Let's take a look at the keypad itself. So it comes packed in this uh, plastic packaging and then it's in this plastic bag and there you have it and now these uh, these keycaps are sort of this light gray and dark gray color combo. They are also available, uh, as we saw and mentioned earlier, in a backlit ABS, uh, double shot ABS variant, if you so prefer. So, first impressions are uh, good. It feels very solid, this. Uh, clear acrylic on the bottom is nice and thick and the keycaps look really sharp. I like the font treatment for the legends. It reminds me of uh, older Apple keyboards actually. Uh, I think it looks really sharp. You can see that uh, there's a bit of texture to those caps. Not a lot, but a bit. Let's see if I can catch the light a little better so you can see. There you go. 
on the sides, certainly you can see. There's some texture to those caps. It's kind of neat. You can see in profile the switches underneath. They're sort of enclosed by this acrylic all the way around. And then the acrylic uh, encloses uh, sort of a, another case in there. Really, the, the acrylic's completely unnecessary because there's a sort of a plastic piece inside. But uh, it looks neat. I don't really know. I guess it's just for aesthetics because I don't think it illuminates underneath. But I guess we'll see. Uh, around this side we've got our micro USB slot. All the sides are rounded off. There are no sharp corners to be seen. We've got rubberized feet. One, two, three, four. There's no way to uh, change the angle on this keypad, so you're kind of stuck with it as it is. Uh, and yeah, the caps. Actually, I don't think this is OEM. I think this is Cherry Profile, which is very similar to OEM, but is actually a bit shorter. They look a bit shorter to me. You can see it better there. So it'll be interesting to see if the Magic Force Smart 2 is uh, OEM or Cherry Profile. I'm hoping that it's Cherry Profile and matches this nicely. Overall, decently weighty. It feels very solid. There's no flex to it whatsoever because this acrylic uh, is not going to flex. It's a, you know, acrylic's a fairly brittle material. Uh, of course, it is glossy. It is prone to scratches uh, and fingerprints. One of the downsides of acrylic, I suppose. But it looks pretty nice. It looks pretty nice. And then, of course, we've got the Gatoron switches. Gatoron browns. Lovely, smooth action on those. I have to say, though, the bottom-out sound feels a bit plasticky. Because this thing's a bit hollow and plasticky, to be honest. That's just by design, I guess. Um, you know, there's a lot of hollow space. You can see it in there. Um, but again, it doesn't necessarily make it feel cheap. Uh, it does have a good weight to it. So we've got escape, tab, backspace, function, numlock, which works independently of your other keyboard, uh, slash or division, uh, asterisk or multiplication, minus, plus, enter, delete, insert, and then our numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as well as a variety of secondary, like nav cluster functions, currency, symbol functions, uh, and other things. So despite being a relatively compact item, there's a lot of functionality packed into a fairly small footprint, it would seem. Now, uh, this does not come with a keycap puller, and I did not think to bring one, because I did not come so equipped. Clearly a professional here. Um, I might just be able to pull one of these off with my fingers here in order to just take a quick look at the switch underneath. You know what? Better plan. I'm going to put this aside. We're going to take a look at the Magic Force 2. I'm assuming that that one comes with a keycap puller, although I could be wrong on that uh, front as well. But uh, hoping that it does. We will then take a look at the switches here uh, after we've unboxed the Magic Force Smart 2. So let's get on with that. Okay, here we are back again with the Smart 2. Similar aesthetic going on. With an image of the product on the front. Smart 2 it says down there, 68 key dual mode multi-device mechanical keyboard. 
That is, of course, referring to the wired and wireless functionality of this keyboard. It's got the Bluetooth Magic Force branding at the top. Overall, very similar packaging aesthetic to the Crystal. And just like the Crystal, we can see here, we've got Gator on switches of the brown flavor, the brown variety. Uh, yeah, this is available with Cherry switches as well, uh, should you be a Cherry Switch fan, but it is more expensive with the Cherry Switches. Uh, around this side, again, product specifications. If we take a quick look, 68 key mini layout, uh, working voltage and current, cable is USB-C. Very interesting that this one is USB-C while the other is mini USB. Kind of annoying, to be totally honest. <laughs> kind of annoying. Uh, dimensions, compatible with Windows XP or later Linux or Mac OS, which it only said Windows on the keypad. Also interesting. Package contents, keyboard, cable, quick start guide. Maybe there isn't a keycap puller in here. <laughs> Maybe there isn't. On the back, again, same kind of situation as on the crystal. A schematic image of the keyboard and then a list of product features. Well, let's go through them, shall we? says here, dual mode, USB for wired mode, Bluetooth 4.1 for wireless. Good to see a relatively modern Bluetooth standard. 5.0 is the more modern standard, but I have yet to see a keyboard with it. Um, but some keyboards still are packing Bluetooth 3, which is going back uh, quite a ways, so 4.1 is good. Should help improve battery life. Uh, connection stability and range. So, uh, one wired device and up to three Bluetooth devices remembered. Compact, handy, and portable. Space saving, 68 key layout, including most of the frequently used keys. Sure. Mechanical key switches ensure quick response. End key rollover in wired mode. Six key rollover in wireless, which is fine. Uh, you're rarely going to need more than six key rollover anyway. Programmable through the driver. You know, that's an interesting question. I don't know that the numpad, the crystal, is programmable. It would be nice if it was because it would let you use it as a macro pad if you wanted. We'll just have to see if it's programmable through the software. Hmm. 3500 milliamp battery, which uh, should be sufficient to give this a pretty substantial battery life. Ergonomic design, floating key design, anodized sandblasted aluminum alloy top plate, CNC machined, detachable USB-C cable, and 10 lighting strength levels with 9 backlight modes. Okay. Uh, again, I believe it is only a white backlight, just like our crystal over there. Uh, and while this image on the front here shows a lovely purple board, uh, and actually I'm kind of regretting not getting the purple now that, I, now that I see it here because it looks really nice, but I went with the light gray, dark gray color combo which you can see right here, uh, which I think looks pretty sharp, too. A little bit more monotone, but or monochrome. Let's slide this sleeve off. Otherwise, a completely unmarked box. Well, it's a sticker. I think that's a bang good thing. Okay.
swear the hardest part of unboxing is actually getting the boxes open half the time. I recently struggled with another one I filmed as well. Which you will presumably see at some point in the future. Part of the challenge is I try to do it quietly, of course. Okay. Inside, we do in fact have our keyboard. Not much in the way of padding. Just some pretty thin cardboard here. And on each side. We do have a USB cable, which USB Type C, uh, A on one end, C on the other. Um, you know, same sheathing as the other one, a white PVC, uh, but slightly different aesthetically. The housings are a bit different. Also, interestingly, no Velcro cable tie, just this here uh, twist tie, which is too bad. Nothing else, no keycap puller. It's not a huge loss because the keycap pullers they tend to pack in with keyboards are generally pretty garbage. They don't look very good. They don't work very well. Um, they tend to scratch your, your keycaps, but it would be nice, for instance, if they included a wire keycap puller, wouldn't it? All right, so it's really pretty empty in here. As, as claimed, there's just the cable and then a quick start guide and the keyboard itself. That's it. Nothing else in there. Let's take a quick peek at this quick start guide. English on one side. Chinese on the other. Keyboard specifications, compatible operating systems. I've already seen all that. We've got board layout, Bluetooth shortcuts, indicator lights. USB-C, cable connects on the back there. It looks like they've got a cable routing channel on the back. And there is a switch for the Bluetooth on the side of the board, it looks like, which is nice. Uh, Bluetooth setup describes operational instructions on the function key, so all the secondary functions displayed here. Of which there are quite a few, actually. Lots and lots. And cautions. <laughs> the cautions read, this product should be well protected against water and moisture for all PCB electronic products get damaged easily in humid environment. Did you know, guys? Keep it out of high pressure, extreme heat. Please charge the keyboard with current less than one amp. That's just a standard USB port on a PC. Do not expose the product to fire or liquid. I wasn't planning on it. Okay, let's take this thing out of its bag. Like I said, not really very well protected, honestly. Uh, not a lot of padding in that that box, and just this plastic bag. No foam padding or anything. But it does appear 
appear to be intact. So, here we have the Magic Force Smart 2. And uh, it looks really nice, doesn't it? Once again, we've got die sub, PBT, keycaps, and it does appear that they match the crystal keycaps very nicely, which is exactly what I had hoped. The colors appear to be spot on, probably made in the same manufacturing run. Well, not exactly the same run, but you know what I mean. So they look pretty good together, don't they? Also the same font treatment, which is important. Uh, one question we had was the profile of these caps. Let's take a peek. And indeed, they do look like cherry profile caps. Which is nice. Because again, that matches with the cherry profile caps on our... Uh, our uh, crystal here. So this board feels pretty weighty. It feels fairly high quality. But let's give it the old 360 tour here. So on the front we have this very unique Magic Force layout, which you don't really see on any other keyboards. It's pretty unique to the Magic Force uh, line of boards. Um, you can see that the top plate, as advertised, is sandblasted aluminum alloy. We've got Magic Force branding here, which is pretty subtle. Now, the... Huh, that's interesting. The Quick Start Guide showed indicator lights right here, but... I don't see any indicator LEDs, do you? <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. Maybe they're... I don't know. Elsewhere, I'm not sure. Um, the edges are a beveled, kind of shiny look, which we've seen on a lot of keyboards. Low-cost ones, often. Uh, Honestly, not a big fan because it's already starting to look pretty mucky. Just like it's, it comes from the factory kind of mucky. Doesn't it? If you look. Also, where I've been handling it. It's already picking up fingerprints. But. Oh well. Manufacturers seem to like this style, so. It's shiny, you know catches the light nicely, but it seems like the machining maybe is not as high quality as it could be, or it could be polished better or something, but there's just a bunch of little, looks like little machining marks on it there. Too bad. Just like little scratches almost. But the top plate itself looks really nice. Also, it's of a good thickness, you can see. Nice thick aluminum top plate. Uh, the case itself feels like an ABS plastic. It is gently or uh, subtly textured. You can see that it kind of is um, undercut here uh, to reveal just a fairly narrow profile. Uh, here's that Bluetooth on off switch. Oh, hey, we got lights. No surprises there. You can see it's illuminated. Now, of course, these are not shine through caps. They are simply die sub PBT, so you don't get shine through legends here. I do not know if this board is available with shine through caps. It may be, because it looked like the crystal was. But uh, I think most of these have the die sub 
BBT caps. That's the most commonly available one. And they look so good, you know, I would happily uh, trade in uh, ABS double shot caps for these PBT caps. Uh, we'll pop one of these caps off in a second to see how thick they are and, and uh, get a, a better look at the quality, but uh, let's just flip it around here. So on the back, we do indeed, as Emmanuel showed, we have a cable routing channel and then the USB Type-C connector is right there. It's kind of an interesting way to do it. I'm not sure why you would do it that way rather than just have the connector along the back, but it's fine. Looks nice enough. We've got rubberized feet there and there. We've also got flip out feet also have anti-skid uh, rubber on them. Now unfortunately if you were to prop this up say like so it is then at a much more severe angle. Or is it? Well it's actually not that different. It is at a more severe angle than the crystal. Uh, and the crystal does not have adjustable That angle is matched, but although the crystal does just sit higher, it's got a higher profile case. So in general, it sits a little higher. Nothing much else to see on the back, just some certifications and serial number and such, QC pass sticker. That's about it. Plastic feels of good quality. It doesn't feel very hollow. Uh, it feels actually pretty uh, sturdy and packed full. It's probably due to that big battery in there. Let's come around the front again. Let's quickly address the layout here. So, of course, one of the big draws of the Magic Force is this unique layout, which is essentially a 60% keyboard right up till you hit this point. Uh, and we've dropped uh, the function key on the right, or actually we've dropped the menu key on the right. We still have function, alt, and control. We've dropped the menu key or the right windows key, depending on the keyboard. Uh, and instead, we've put in this kind of slightly offset arrow key cluster. We have a standard size shift key, and then up here, we've got just a little set of nav cluster keys. Um, the brilliant thing about this layout is that it maintains perfect keycap compatibility. So you could swap out this set for any keycap set you want. Any standard layout set is going to be compatible with this, including, you know, the cheaper ones off uh, AliExpress or whatever which is great. Uh, it gives you lots of flexibility. Many boards, when they try and pack in more functionality in a smaller footprint, you end up with uh, one new sized uh, function alt and control keys over here, or you end up with a shortened shift key, all kinds of things. Um, which, you know, if you're willing to pay up for more expensive keycap sets with sort of coverage of those weird sizes and shapes, then that's fine. But uh, it's really nice that they maintain such great keycap compa compatibility on the Magic Force. Uh, one other thing to look at here, very quickly. Let's pull that cap off, take a look at it. It's pretty thick, very little flex, nicely textured surface, and the die sub job looks great. Uh, it's very sharp. Let's pull off one of these, uh, let's pull off a lighter colored keycap so you can just see just how sharp that is. Look at that. Sometimes you get a slightly fuzzy effect on die sub caps, but not so here. They look excellent. 
nice and thick. These are some high quality keycaps. Uh, definitely cut above what you typically see on budget oriented boards. So that's great. And then of course the switches, I was going to pull the switches off or pull the caps off on the uh, crystal over here, but there's really no point because these both feature Gator on Brown, so you can see it right here. Brown stem, Gator on housing, clear top housing to allow the, the white backlight to shine through. And of course Gator on Browns, so smooth. Wonderful smooth switches. I prefer them to Cherry Browns, honestly. They're much less scratchy. And that is pretty well it. Um, oh, one more thing to go. The flex test. Let's just give it a shot and see. So there is a bit of flex there. You can see it does flex a little bit. Watch. But I'm cranking on that pretty hard. And interestingly, very little in the way of... Um, very little in the way of uh, creaking plastic or anything like that. Just a bit of flex, but that's pretty typical. All right, I think it's time that we uh, took a quick look at the Bluetooth functionality and backlighting, and then we put these through their paces. All right, so here we have the Smart 2 plugged in next to the crystal. And as you can see, when they're side by side, they take up almost as much space as a full-size keyboard, but not quite, because uh, you've only got two columns of keys over here, whereas normally you'd have three and then another little gap, and then your numpad. Uh, and of course, it's still a bit shorter because the 60% or 65-ish percent layout of the Smart 2 is lacking a uh, uh, F-Row. So, uh, but of course the big benefit is modularity. If you wanted, you could remove the crystal here, have your compact keyboard and just bring in the numpad when you want it. Uh, one downside of this configuration is you have two separate plugs. So we have the plug for the crystal here we have the plug for the Smart 2 over here. And uh, earlier, when I was unboxing these, I erroneously said that the Smart 2 had a micro USB connector. It is, in fact, a mini USB connector, which is a weird choice. That is a very dated connector. Um, if you're going to go with something other than USB-C these days, it's almost always micro USB, and even that is pretty dated. So a mini USB, which is actually a larger plug than micro USB, I know it's confusing, but um, that is a, a strangely dated connector, and it's a real shame that they used it because I usually keep a USB uh, cord uh, of both a micro and a type C plugged in to my computer at all times so I can swap out my boards as I need but uh, I never keep a mini USB cable plugged in because why would you? But virtually no devices these days use it. Anyway, I mean it's a minor thing ultimately but it's still kind of annoying and in this day and age there's really no excuse to not use a USB type C connector especially considering that the Smart 2 uses the Type-C, so it would be nice to be able to have, uh, you know, to swap the cable uh, between the two of them if you wanted, but you can't do that as designed. All right, let's take a quick look at the lighting effects here. You'll notice I have a fair bit of ambient light, um, and that's because, obviously, these keycaps are not shined through, so you wouldn't be able to see the legends if I didn't have some ambient light when all the ambient light is off and it's just dark, uh, you do get, of course, this glow between the keys that you're seeing, and it does kind of provide a little bit of illumination, 
of the legends on the keycaps, but not really. You can't really see what's on there. Maybe on a lighter set of keycaps you could, but uh, certainly not on the dark modifiers. It's just too dark. And the PBT material they use for these caps is thick enough that the light doesn't shine through them at all. There's no translucency. Uh, I'd like to remind you that if you are seeing any flickering uh, of these lights, it looks like there might be a little bit here on the crystal. Um, that's just an artifact of the camera and the shutter speed and uh, the LEDs themselves. I don't see any flickering in person. Okay, so let's skip through these options quickly here. There's not that many. We'll start with the crystal. Uh, you can hold down function and you can press uh, enter to reduce the brightness or uh, plus here to increase the brightness. It looks like there's, let's count the steps. So off, one, two, three, four, five. Five brightness steps altogether. Um, you notice that at its brightest setting, it's actually brighter than the LEDs on the Smart 2. Um, the Smart 2 is as bright as it gets right now. So I have been keeping the crystal here down at sort of a middle brightness setting, which I think matches the Smart 2 better. Uh, the good news is the brightnesses do match up pretty well and the uh, color cast of the LEDs matches up pretty well. These are very cool white LEDs as opposed to like a warm white. These are quite bluey, almost a little bit purpley LEDs, um, you know, for a white anyway. At least that's what it looks like to me, but I'm colorblind, <laughs> bear in mind. <laughs> but they look pretty cool. Uh, in a color temperature sort of way. Uh, you can also cycle through some lighting effects on the smart, uh, sorry, on the crystal over here. Uh, some of which are shared with the smart 2, uh, but the smart 2 has additional effects besides. So if you go, uh, what is it? Function tilde, I think. Oh, that's wrong. No, ah, I remember. <laughs> quality review function five actually cycles through different options here. So um, this is a reactive mode where when you press on the key, it lights up. Uh, this is a breathing mode, I believe. Yeah. And that one is shared with the smart too, although well, we'll try in a second here, but you kind of would have a hard time uh, getting them both synchronized perfectly, I would think. Uh, there's no way to adjust the speed on the crystal, the speed of the breathing effect, whereas you can do that on the Smart 2. Uh, and then, what is this? Oh, just off again. So solid, reactive, breathing, or off. Those are your options. You note that the num lock key, which is again independent to this keypad, it stays on uh, regardless of your lighting setting. Okay, let's move over to the Smart 2. Uh, we have a similar kind of lighting options, just a few more of them. So uh, brightness is adjustable here in a few steps. Looks like five as well. So off, one, two, three, four, five. That's that. And then in terms of lighting effects, you go function period. And we've got this kind of hyperactive effect. It's like stacking up rows of light, but you can slow it up or slow it down or speed it up with function left and function right. So let's slow right down. You can see there's some flicker in the LED transitions when it's slowed right down. It doesn't look quite so nice. It's a little choppier looking. 
much smoother when you speed it up, but that's pretty crazy looking. <laughs> Almost reminds me of Tetris in some way, where it stacks up like that. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, uh, waves. You can slow that down as well. But it looks pretty choppy. What's this? Oh, all right, sure. Sort of waves out. It's a reactive mode. Lines shooting out. Another reactive mode. Oh yeah, this one's weird. It only the leftmost button uh, lights up, which seems like a really strange thing to me. No matter what you press, only the leftmost switch lights up. Oh, wait a second. What? It's like it stacks up somehow. One, two, that's weird. What does that look like when typing? Huh. Okay. Well, that's a little more interesting than I thought it was. And then... I see. I think it turns off. Oh no. I thought it turned off when you press on it, but no. This just looks like a solid mode, to be honest, but we haven't gotten through the cycle yet. There. See, now there's a reactive mode where it turns off when you press it. And the breathing mode, which you can speed up or slow down. Now let's see. Is that the fastest it goes? Can we synchronize this? Let's see. Uh, It's close. No, this one's actually cycling at a faster rate. And this is as fast as it goes. So they will never quite synchronize. It doesn't look bad even when they're out of sync, but unfortunately there's no way to get them to do the breathing thing together. Ah uh, well, let's just go back to our solid backlight option on both of them. So uh, those are the lighting effects. That's all there is. Just a fairly humble handful of effects. None of them really that exciting. The quality of the LEDs is fine, but not amazing in that, uh, you know, the animations are a little choppy at the lower speeds and such. And of course, it's only white, no RGB. So pretty limited backlighting configuration on these products, unfortunately. One thing I'd like to draw to your attention is the LED over here. You might recall during our unboxing, I could not figure out where the LEDs were. Turns out they're very cleverly uh, hidden under the backplate, and the aluminum backplate is just perforated ever so slightly to allow the LED to shine through. But when it's off, you don't even see it, which is a really clean way of doing that. I like it a lot, and I've never seen that effect before. Like, you see, there's no LEDs visible there. If I press the caps lock button, there it is. Suddenly it appears. That's pretty slick. I'm into that. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Let's look at Bluetooth now. Uh, I did get Bluetooth working. For some reason, it took me a while, um, in theory, to switch between USB and Bluetooth mode. All you have to do is hold down Function and then long press for three seconds, a Q, W, or E, and that will uh, set it to uh, Bluetooth mode in that slot basically and you can switch between devices once you're paired then you can go function R to switch back to USB mode. Easy in theory in practice uh, I was pressing and holding function Q and um, the pairing indicator light which is this one here 
uh, it glows this yellow when it's in USB mode, but uh, it goes either green, um, I don't know, red, green, or blue, depending on which Bluetooth device you have active. Um, anyway, it's supposed to flash quickly to indicate that you're in pairing mode, but it would never do that. It just flashed slowly, and I just kind of mucked around with it, switched back to USB, back to Bluetooth, tried different slots until eventually it just suddenly worked. I honestly don't know what I did differently, and I was following the instructions to a T. So... Anyway, I did eventually get the Bluetooth working, and now that I have paired items, it works fine. Uh, I can just short press function, short press Q. This now switches to a red, uh, and it's solid, which indicates that it is uh, paired to my device, which in this case is my phone. Uh, and now I can go function W, and it goes to green, and it's solid, which indicates it is now paired to my PC just to, uh, well, I can't really prove it to you, but I can prove to myself it is indeed working. Uh, so really easy to switch between paired devices once you have them paired, <laughs> once you get the pairing sorted. And then we can just go uh, function R, and we are back in USB mode. Uh, I also must say that the Bluetooth mode is... Uh, nice and responsive. I didn't notice any lag when using it in Bluetooth mode um, for either uh, typing or gaming. I, I noticed no lag, but as usual, if you want maximum performance, I do recommend keeping it in wired USB mode, uh, you know, for competitive gaming and such. So aside from the issues I ran into getting it to pair in the first place, uh, the Bluetooth mode seems to work fine. It is Bluetooth version 4, but um, it's backwards compatible. For instance, my PC, the dongle, is only version 3, but it still pairs and operates just fine. No issues there. Uh, the one thing that I can't really report on is battery life, because I've used this interchangeably in both wired and wireless mode, and I never really uh, let the battery run all the way down. But um, uh, it has a pretty decently sized battery in there. Uh, I used it for at least a full day, I'll say, of pretty regular usage um, in battery mode. And it seemed to be just fine. So uh, that's what I can say about that. All right. So the next thing to look at is the software. There is, in fact, software. You can download it from Magic Force's website, which is just magicforce.cn. They do have an English version of their website. It's very easy to find where to download the driver, which I appreciate because sometimes you have to go on a wild goose chase to find the drivers for these Chinese boards. Just in case, though, I will link it down in the video description uh, for you if you're looking for it. Make it nice and easy for you. But uh, let's take a quick look at that software, shall we? And here we have the Magic Force software. They just call it their Smart 68 software. And it's very lightweight. I'll give them that. It's also not particularly feature rich and <laughs> not the most intuitive or prettiest looking software I've seen. But it generally gets the job done. One area where it does fall down is the backlight configuration, because uh, it doesn't have any, which is why I don't have the picture-in-picture picture with the keyboard inset for you, because there's no reason for me to show it to you right now, um, because we can, we can remap the keys here, but not the lighting. So that's a bit disappointing. Uh, this toggle here toggles between English and Chinese, uh, by default, it starts in Chinese every time you start it up. It doesn't seem to save or remember your last setting, which is a little bit annoying, but not a big deal. So it looks like we can export and import key map configurations. We can reset to defaults. 
And then when we want to push our uh, key map configuration to the keyboard, you have to press update. So um, configuring individual keys is very easy. You just click it, and you get a dialog here for doing various things. If you want to um, just uh, do a single key press, that's here. Uh, I guess you can do a record mode where it'll change it to what you press. There you go. I just made it E. If you wanted Q to be E, hit default, reset it. You can do a combination of keys. I don't quite know how the combination list differs from a macro. I guess the combination list executes them all at once, maybe? Whereas a macro allows you to insert delays and pauses and uh, repeated uh, actuations in between. But it looks like a fairly uh, basic macro editor that does everything one might expect. It's nice that they do include that. Basic multimedia functions, browser functions, all the built-in Windows stuff, including the calculator. You can emulate mouse um, actions. And we have a whole kind of a grab bag of other stuff here which are other functions built into the keyboard, such as uh, changing a Bluetooth device, switching back to USB mode. There's some interesting swap options here. And weirdly, mouse DPI up and down. <laughs> Don't know what's up with that. Program mode swap. Don't know what that is. Time for BT sleep. Some kind of Bluetooth related function. Also don't really know what that is. Uh, and then uh, the lighting effects, you can also rebind. And all of this can be done on the top layer or on the secondary function layer, which is great to see. All the same options are here. Uh, the unfortunate thing here uh, is that while all of this applies to the Smart 2, none of it applies to the Crystal. There's no way to rebind keys on the Crystal keypad, which is a big bummer because it would be nice to be able to use it as a macro pad to be able to rebind it as you please. Sadly, not an option. Another bummer about the macro or about the, uh, the Crystal, which uh, I discovered, is unfortunately you cannot do alt codes with it. You know, alt codes where you hold down alt and then type you know, a four or five number code, or sometimes less, it just depends on the character you want. Uh, but it'll give you non-standard characters like various emojis um, and symbols, uh, as well as accented characters. So like if you want the E with the accent like in Pokemon, uh, that's Alt-0233. Uh, and that works on a full-size keyboard, does not work with the crystal, which is a big bummer. Uh, and again, no way to rebind the crystal. Uh, but that's the long and the short of it anyway. Uh, the software, very bare bones, very lightweight, functional in a basic sense, not especially pretty to look at. And the lack of backlighting configuration from software is a bit of a bummer. All right. I think it's time that we now moved on to the typing test. So you can hear this thing in action, or these things. I will type first on the Smart 2 for a while, and then I'll do some noodling around on the keypad, on the crystal, so that you can hear that as well. Let's hop to it.
Alright, so we've had a chance to check out both the Magic Force Smart 2 and the Crystal. You've seen them in action. We checked out the backlighting, we checked out the Bluetooth, we checked out the software, uh, and you got to hear them. So you got to hear the typing experience. So, very briefly, let's talk about the Crystal first. I don't have a lot to say about my usage experience with the Crystal. Um, except that it was totally functional. I really like the Gatoron Brown switches, um, but I'm disappointed that there's no alt code support and that there is no remap ability. I would really like to be able to remap the keys on the crystal using that same software. That would be excellent. So basic functionality, totally fine. Seems well made, does what it purports to do but it is a shame that it lacks those two features. Uh, the Magic Force Smart 2 was um, something that I really enjoyed using. It's a really well-made keyboard that looks really good. Um, those keycaps are really nice, and the keycaps on the crystal being the same caps were also really nice. I can't complain about die sub PBT caps. <laughs> they are very well-made. They will last for virtually ever. I like the intelligent, sort of well-considered layout of the Magic Force Smart 2. I think it's well made in that sense. I like the fact that it's got uh, very good keycap compatibility. Um, of course, the Bluetooth, as I described earlier, was a little finicky to get working in the first place. But once it was working, it worked fine once I had those connections established. Um, typing on the Smart 2 was good. The keycaps uh, feel nice under the fingers, if maybe a little smooth. I wouldn't mind a little bit more texture. Um, the switches, of course, perfect. Gatoron Browns are some of my favorite um, relatively inexpensive switches. Personally, I would take them over Cherry Browns any day. Um, because they're just so smooth. Gatoron Browns have this wonderful smoothness about them that really it makes you feel like your fingers are just kind of gliding over those, uh, those switches, those keycaps when you're typing. It's a feeling I've only got from Gatoron Browns, um, just with that, I guess, relatively low actuation force and very smooth action. Um, but the bottom out on this board is pretty hard. You might have heard it when I was typing. Um, it's very clacky when you bottom out. So if you want to quiet it up a bit or you're just not a fan of a hard bottom out, uh, I might recommend picking up some O-rings and popping them on there. I may do that with this board actually because I think that would feel really, really nice. But other than that, I don't have a whole lot to say about uh, the usage of these products. They are well made, they perform consistently, I think they look pretty good. I like the look of the, f the Smart 2 more than I like the look of the Crystal. Um, I think that like plastic uh, clear acrylic case on the Crystal isn't actually doing it any favor stylistically to me. It looks a bit dated. It's very, uh, like, mid-2000s Apple to me. <laughs> it makes me think of my old, uh, like, old, old Nintendo DS, actually. Um, or DS Lite, I guess it was. It kind of had that, like, clear acrylic. You probably know what I'm talking about. A lot of Mac products at that time did, too. Uh, anyway, so I don't think that's doing any favors, and I actually wish that the aesthetic matched the Smart 2 better with that aluminum top plate since these products are kind of made to go together. Um, they do have product shots with them together and stuff, so yeah, it'd be nice if the aesthetic matched a little bit more, I guess. All right, that's my <laughs> stream of consciousness thoughts about these products. Let's run down the pros and the cons, and I'm going to keep it pretty quick since I just kind of told you everything I have to say, more or less, in detail here. Uh, but let's start by running down the pros and the cons uh, of the uh, crystal. 
Starting with the pros for the Magic Force Crystal, I really like those keycaps. I've said it a bunch, but they are really nicely made, nice and thick, PBT material, die sub, they're never going to wear out, excellent keycaps. I also really like the Gatoron switches. Those are some of my favorite switches, as I said, and they're inexpensive as well, so they help keep the cost down. And finally, I appreciate the layout of this thing in that it incorporates some additional functionality on a secondary function layer, uh, which is great to see. It's just a shame that it doesn't work with alt codes and that it's not remappable. Over here in the cons department, I have a few things to say about the crystal. The first is that I think the aesthetic is a bit dated, as I was describing. It just harkens back to sort of the mid-2000s, um, sort of designs from Apple and that sort of thing. I don't think that a clear acrylic case is doing it any favors, and I would rather see it more aesthetically aligned with the Smart 2. Also dating it in some ways is the inclusion of that mini USB port. It's maybe not a big issue, but it just bugs me. It is not a modern standard for USB connections. It really ought to be USB Type-C in this day and age. Uh, miss me with that. <laughs> the third thing that I wasn't crazy about with this uh, keypad is, as I've described, the lack of remappability. That would really increase the value and extend the functionality of this keypad if you could remap the keys. You could use it as a macro pad for Photoshop or what have you. It'd be great. And finally, the lack of alt codes, while not a big deal for some, is a bit of a deal breaker for me, because that's one of my primary uses of the keypad. Maybe I'm a freak, and I've just memorized a bunch of alt codes. Most people probably don't do that, but I like having that functionality on my numpad, and it's really unfortunate that the crystal doesn't have it. Back over to this side to talk about the pros for the Magic Force Smart 2, the keyboard. First thing that I really like is the unique layout of this keyboard. It's not a layout I've ever seen on any other type of keyboard. I think it's well considered and fairly smart in that it, you know, has a relatively compact footprint, only a bit bigger than a 60% board, but manages to retain some of the functionality uh, that people might miss from a 60% board, like the dedicated arrow keys and some of those nav cluster buttons, dedicated delete key comes to mind. Uh, I also really appreciate the excellent keycaps on this board. Just like I said for the crystal, these keycaps are uh, PBT, nice and thick, die sub legends, you can't go wrong, and they look really good too. Uh, I should point out, this keyboard is available in a bunch of other colors. I got the gray on gray, which is fairly reserved, but if you want something more colorful, it's available in, I think, blue and purple, maybe green. Uh, there's also sort of like a red, white, and blue look. Um, and so, and a, a, like a multicolor, almost rainbow kind of look for the modifiers. So, uh, if you want to go nuts, you can do that with the keycaps. Uh, and they are very well made. Third thing that I really like about the Magic Force Smart 2 is that it maintains excellent keycap compatibility. Not that you would necessarily want to replace the stock caps, because like I just finished saying, they are excellent. But if you did, say you wanted to put some, um, you know, double shot shine through caps on there, you can buy pretty much any set without having to buy weird modifiers or special sized keys. Any cheap set, slap it on there and it'll work. So props to Magic Force for maintaining the good keycap compatibility. Also really pleased to see Gatoron switches. This is something worth calling out because they're, as I said before, significantly cheaper than Cherry MX switches. And personally, I like them better. So Gatoron switches always a pleasure to see. Also want to call out the dual wired and wireless functionality. That is no doubt one of the appeals of this board and something that you do pay for. It does drive the price up a bit, 
but it was nice to see the inclusion of a modern Bluetooth standard in Bluetooth 4.0. Uh, and despite the challenges I had getting it connected initially, once it was connected, it was very easy to swap between uh, wired USB mode and wireless modes and swap between different connected devices almost instantaneously. The connection was nice and strong. And finally, I appreciate the inclusion of the hardware power switch. This is actually something that I haven't really mentioned elsewhere, but uh, it's just nice to be able to shut it off uh, when you're using it in Bluetooth mode and then you leave your PC. It conserves some battery life. Uh, it's just nice to see that hardware switch. Moving over to the cons side of things, only a couple things to mention here. The first is the limited backlighting. It's unfortunate that this port doesn't come with RGB backlighting and the white backlighting they have, while functional, not the highest quality implementation I've seen, fairly limited in terms of effects, uh, and there's a bit of flicker in those LEDs when they're animating at the slower speeds. I also have to mention that the Bluetooth was a bit finicky to get set up in the first place. I followed the instructions in the manual very carefully I believe I did everything correctly, but I didn't want to connect for the first little while. I had to just kind of muck around with it, keep trying, until eventually, somehow, it just kind of worked. <laughs> After that point, it was fine, but uh, it did take m more hassle than it ought to have. And finally, I have to give it a mark down for that subpar software. It just isn't great. <laughs> the backlighting option didn't work at all. The rest of it, very bare bones, not especially intuitive. It's no great surprise to me that <laughs> the software for a uh, keyboard such as this wouldn't be particularly good, but always have to call it out just to let people know. All right, it's time to talk verdicts. Let's start with the crystal. This is a product that purports to extend the functionality of keyboards that don't have a numpad, such as on a compact laptop or a more compact sort of 60 percent or 10 keyless style keyboard. And in the most basic sense, it succeeds at that. It does what it sets out to do in that regard. It is also well made. The keycaps are excellent. I do like the switches a lot as well, but the case, this plastic acrylic case, uh, and the inclusion of this mini USB port do make it feel a bit dated. And there are a couple of other major drawbacks that prevent it from realizing its full potential, in my opinion. Chief among them is the fact that there is no remappability. You cannot use software to remap the keys and turn it into, for instance, a macro pad for video work or image editing work. Equally disappointing is the lack of alt code support, which is something that I value pretty highly. Others may not, but still, I wish it had it. All things considered, I have to say, I feel like the $35 MSRP for this is a bit on the steep side, uh, just considering it's a relatively basic functionality. And overall, although it's not an awful product, I did come away somewhat disappointed with the crystal. Now, fortunately, it's a different story with the Magic Force Smart 2. The Smart 2 is a well-made and great-looking keyboard, in my opinion. Uh, the DiSub PBT caps and the dual-mode wired and wireless functionality are definitely strong points for this board. Even if I was a bit disappointed by the limited lighting, the lack of RGB, for instance, on this board, um, and the software, of course, uh, leaves something to be desired. I feel like at the $100 price point, which is the MSRP for this board, it's maybe a wee bit overpriced, um, considering especially that there are lots of other very strong contenders uh, at the, around this price point for compact 
mechanical keyboards, many that come with full RGB backlighting. The Ann Pro 2, for instance, comes to mind. However, on sale, uh, I think that this becomes a much more solid buy, and you are in luck because at the time of publication of this video, Banggood has the Magic Force Smart 2 on for $69, and I think that is a very appealing price for a very appealing keyboard. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. You got a bit of a two-for-one in this review. It's the first time, I think, the first time I've done that. Maybe I'll do it more in future, because it's kind of an efficient use of everyone's time, right? We'll just have to see. Anyway, if you are interested in either of the products that we looked at here today, you will find links for them down in the video description and at the top of the comments where you can go check them out on Banggood. And as I said, the Smart 2 is currently on sale for what I consider to be a really good price for the board. And the Crystal is actually on sale as well as of the time of recording. I think it's $5 off, bringing the price down to 30 bucks. Anyway, you can click through on there check them out at Banggood, and if you purchase through those links, you do support the channel, which of course I very much appreciate. Uh, special thanks to Banggood for sending over the review samples that we looked at here today, and special thanks of course to each and every one of you for watching. It means very much to me. I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys.